Hello and welcome to the super basic introductory workflow video. This video today will be geared towards, well, let's say the impatient user, perhaps even the user who's not that comfortable working in Max MSP, let alone with Orc Idea. Uh, that's all fine and dandy. We would like to show you a quick process for getting an orchestration that you generate quickly out of Max, out of Orc Idea, and into a notation program of your choice. So I'm Lewis, and I'll take you through this process today. For our purposes today, let's just imagine a dialogue between, let's say, an orc idealist and a student who's wanting to learn how to do this stuff. All right, so the student asks, I have a sound file, a wave file even, let's say, and I'd like to orchestrate it and then load that solution into Finale as an orchestration. Tell me, oh Orc Idealist, what are the steps? Well, my answer as your Orc Idealist is to first remind you that you will need two Max packages installed. If you haven't seen our video on the installation, please do so before continuing. Under the Extras menu, if things are done properly, you'll see the Bach Overview file, meaning that you've properly installed the Bach library for computer-assisted composition in Max. And somewhere in here, you'll also see the Orc Idea overview file, meaning that you've properly installed the Orc Idea library for assisted orchestration in Max. You got that down, we're ready to go. So let's imagine you're working on your own patch in Max. Control N for new patch. And let's say you want to include some orchestration logic in there. Go to your extras menu, and bring up the Orc Idea overview file listed here, and then locate the first tutorial static orchestration. Click on that, and it brings up a really fancy help patch. Without describing much of it, I'm just gonna scroll down to about here, and I'm gonna unlock the patch, Command E, and I'm gonna highlight and copy and paste this logic here to get started. Control C, and then I'm gonna take that away, and then in my own patch, control V. We can use this as a starter template for our own orchestration. Now what you'll see here is an object in the sort of middle called orcidea.solve. In a newer version of this orcidea package, it'll be called orcidea.orchestrate, but it is backwards compatible. So both objects essentially run the same stuff. It's gonna solve our orchestration for us. And it needs three pieces of input. One is this object right over here, which is a link to a database that comes prepackaged with the Orc Idea uh, software. It's a database of audio samples, tiny SOL. The second piece of input you're going to need is a list of instruments that make up your orchestra. To see what these abbreviations are, simply option click on the orcidea.solve object to bring up a help file. You can read all about all the parameters of this object. We'll get into the weeds with this later. And then finally, the last piece of the puzzle that triggers the orchestration in the hot inlet to orcidea.solve or orcidea.orchestrate, you'll need a path, either an absolute or relative path, to a sound file that represents what we call your target sound file. What is a target sound file, you may ask? The sound you'd like to orchestrate. That's that simple. A recorded sound that doesn't have to be originally instrumental in source. Maybe it's a real world or an abstract sound source. But nevertheless, the sound that you'd like the orchestra to mimic, and the instrument should sort of add up to the timbre that, uh, that you're trying to mimic. Now you as the student may say, isn't this like mimesis? And actually, yes, it's basically like the horn call. It's like the icons and symbolization that we have a rich history for in the orchestra. It's like intertextuality. It's like mimesis. It's uh, impersonations and characterizations. It's all of those things. That's essentially the logic we're building things off of. Now, I get excited. And I can talk about this stuff with you all day, but maybe you're thinking, what do I do next? Well, if you've got your three input ingredients, you're ready to essentially cook up your first ever Hello World orchestration. Let's do so by first making sure our audio is turned on here, making sure the Easy DAC object is illuminated, the speaker icon. And then let's come up here and press the button here for Run Orchestration and Observe. So what are we hearing and seeing? 
Well, over here on the right, you see in this Bach.roll proportional notation object, a collection of note events that represent the superimposed audio samples from your instrumental sample database. These have been chosen by orcidea.solve or orcidea.orchestrate to closely approximate the timbres of your input uh, target audio file. We can compare the two. I'm going to unlock my patch and just option click and drag on the start message box, connect it up here to the play object so that we can hear both. So here's the target sound file that we started with. Our lovely bell source sound and let's also listen to the solution again. Sounds pretty good to me. Hello world. Now it's important to remember that this orchestra selection is uh, optimized to best match the timbral qualities of your target sound the bell sound, uh, just right out of the box using default parameters that are uh, written into the orcidea.solve object. But eventually, you're going to replace those parameters with some of your own. And, of course, imagine that you'll replace this Archaeos bell sound with a recording of your own that you want to orchestrate. So let's imagine that you've run all your orchestrations and you're ready to see this in a notation program. You might think, how do I export this for Finale or some other program? Well, fortunately in Bach, there are many ways to do this, and right out of the box, it's rather easy. So I'm going to unlock my patch and press M for message box, and I'm just going to quickly make a message here called export MIDI, and attach it to the leftmost inlet of my Bach roll, and lock and go ahead and press your export MIDI message, and then I'll on my desktop, I guess I'm going to save this as Bell version 1. Just a generic MIDI file without changing any other parameters. And now, since I already have Finale open on my computer, I'm going to go up to File, Open. And then on my desktop, I'm going to select the new MIDI file I created. And there are a lot of import options. Only thing I'm going to change here, I'm going to leave most of the default parameters. I'm going to choose Channels Become Staves right here, the second radio button, and click OK. And there you have it. You've got an orchestration that is quickly uh, sort of imported into a notation program. Now you might say to yourself though, what's wrong with this? Something is different. If I compare the imported version with the, here it is, the, uh, the version in Bach, I see dynamics and playing markings like Ordinario telling me what my play mode is, etc. None of that information is over here. And if I further inspect this, I see there are a lot more staves here uh, than there are in my finale version. I see there's grouped uh, staves. Tracks 0 through 1 are mapped on one staff here, 0 through 3, etc. Um, I've got combinations of notes on my staves here that don't appear in Bach. So we can refine this. We can do this with a lot more uh, uh, sort of specificity by using another export format called XML, which we'll look at in our next video or in a future video. This requires a little bit of extra knowledge to fully customize your input parameters, get the sound you want, and uh, get things into Finale or another notation program of your choice. But that's an easy and quick way to uh, get your stuff into a notation program, and you can immediately parse this out even with these few staves here and, and start working with things in your preferred composition environment. And that's it for now. We'll look forward to seeing you in a next video. See you next time. Bye-bye.